are listening to the What's a Wrestling podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, R.J. Oh, you already know what time it is. Perfect. That's right. We back, baby. We got Monday Night Raw and NXT reviews coming at you live from my room. But first things first, show them my socials. Thank you. So. My socials didn't pop up. It's okay. We will not falter. We will keep. There we go. <laughs> Let's go. Surprise, motherfucker. The show don't stop, baby. Show them the socials. Follow me. RJD underscore 199 on Instagram. RJD199 on Snapchat. RJ699 on Twitter. But most importantly, follow What's The Wrestling on Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. Follow What The Wrestling, follow what the wrestling on Spotify and Anchor. Follow What The Wrestling because you want to follow What The Wrestling. You guys already know. So let's start playing these games. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. The camera was off. Tis I, RJD here. We got a lot of issues going on today. God damn. Take one day off and everything goes to hell. So we're going to stop it. Get some help. Welcome to What The Wrestling. I am your host, RJD. We are here at the podcast where we talk about all things wrestling. And we are here to talk about Monday Night Raw and Smack, uh, not SmackDown. What the hell am I talking about? You stupid. NXT. Listen, y'all must forgive me. I'm making some mistakes today. Nope. But we're going to keep it, and we're going to keep it rolling. That's why I see. That's why I love you guys, because I make mistakes, and I don't cut them out. I leave them in. <laughs> but for real, though, we are here. Uh, we have Monday Night Raw. We had NXT 2.0 last night. We had some good on NXT, some bad on NXT. And we have a couple... Of announcements on NXT, but first things first, let us not forget hit the goddamn like button, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What the wrestling on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok, as well as Anchor and Spotify. You guys already know. Thank you guys for all the love. Thank you for listening to a brother. Thank you for showing me love. I appreciate it all. I'm out here showing the chest hairs in the robe, but we ain't done yet, baby. We ain't done yet. So, let's get into NXT, being that that was last night. Triple H is back. Hey, wasn't expecting that, right? So, reports are Triple H is back in NXT. Um, what do I think about this? I think this is great. Uh, real talk. Give me a hell yeah. I said give me a hell yeah. So Triple H is confirmed back in NXT. We all know Triple H 
is behind NXT Black and Gold, the true NXT. We ain't talking about this 2.0 stuff. No disrespect to them, but Stop the cap. we all know which NXT was better. But according to Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio, Triple H was present during this week's taping, th- during this week's episode of NXT, and the last couple of weeks have been taped and the shows have been better, so maybe they should stick to that format. That seems to be working. But, ch- hey, what the hell is that? I swear I gotta brush this cat. Triple H was in fact backstage and he said, I'm back. So, I think that was a cat hair. John Pollock reported this today and we have confirmed it. Triple H showed up in NXT today and he had a meeting with everyone. The two things that he said that were notable was that he is back. Respect my authority. He also said he was there for business reasons, but he could not yet say why. That worries me. Why does that worry me? Because I don't want Triple H back for business reasons. I want Triple H running NXT 2.0. Now, listen, we all know NXT 2.0 is not NXT 1.0. The old NXT literally had indie superstars getting scooped up, and he was taking all the indie guys that were awesome and putting them on TV, uh, putting them on the network, putting them on WWE, letting them have banger ass matches, guys such as <clears throat> Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Neville, Kevin Owens, um, uh, FTR at the time, the Revival, um, Adam Cole, the whole Undisputed Era, like Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode. All of the Drew McIntyre even. And, of course, Andrade El Idalo. So he had all of these guys and many, many more from the Indies coming in and just going crazy on NXT, killing it as always. But this is not that. Nope, this is not that. Nope. This is developmental, where we have a few guys who can go, like Carmelo Hayes and... Cameron Grimes to the moon. But we also have guys that are very green, like Mr. Trick Trick and Braun Breaker and Tony D from the family. So you got the good guys mixed in with the guys who can work and gals, obviously. So this is not that. It's different. But still, with Triple H's tutelage and with Triple H behind it, and Triple H booking it, and Triple H telling the stories, I still believe NXT 2.0, it can be something. It's not going to be what it once was, but it can at least be decent and respectable. So if he is indeed back, and eventually he's going to come back to take that bitch over creatively and to be in charge of it, I'm all for it. If he's just back to just look around and still follow Bruce Pritchard's lead and... Nah, it's bullshit. No. We don't want that. We don't want that. Stop it. Get some help. So, if he's just back for that... Get the fuck out of here! But I hope I'm wrong. But we will see what happens in the next couple of days, couple of weeks, and we will see what happens moving forward. Hopefully, Triple H is A-OK and ready to rock. And I hope he is back in a full-time capacity in NXT. So, we'll see what happens. And speaking of NXT, let's talk about it. We started off with Solo Sokoa. And Grayson Waller, Mr. Oos, did take the L here. Not going to lie, I'm surprised. Solo Sokoa has gotten a lot better, but I like Solo Sokoa. Listen, when you come from that bloodline, from that family, you know, we the ones. You know, when you come from that bloodline, you ain't got no choice but to be good. He's probably green. Doesn't matter. He's going to be fine. There was a, uh, there was a powerbomb. Uh, not powerbomb. There was a jump in stunner. And listen, Waller got the win. So, 
Uh, not much more to say here. I'm surprised he won, but he got the win. Maybe they're building him up to lose to Braun Breaker because I don't think he's the guy to beat Braun Breaker. But Jason uh, Grayson Waller is good. Like, he can really wrestle. He's good. I still don't understand the damn character, but I like Solo Sokoa, man. I, work, I like Solo Sokoa and I like Grayson Waller. Good match. Good stuff. Katana Chance versus Kaden Carter. Oh. Uh, I always do that when it, when I when it comes to these two. You stupid. Katana Chance versus Kaden uh and Kaden Carter. I did it again. You stupid. Versus Valentina Faraz and Yusina Leon. Uh Okay. Um Chance and Carter won with the 450 into the neckbreaker if I'm not mistaken. Um Jordan Devlin is coming to NXT 2.0 as JD Mc, McDog, McDog. Uh, I don't like that name. Nope. Why couldn't he just be Jordan Devlin? He's really, really good. He can really, really wrestle. And I believe he was uh, trained under Finn Balor. And we all know who else was trained under Finn Balor, Miss Becky Lynch. Perfect. So, yeah, I'm all for Jordan Devlin. He's dope. Uh this was like three, four minutes. It didn't go that long. But at the end, Leon and Faraz, they need some work. So hopefully they continue to work and get better. We had Jaquan Wild and Cruz de la, del Toro versus Roderick Strong and Damon Kemp. Damon Kemp is a goddamn beast. Goddamn. Uh, Strong slapped Kemp in the face. That set him off and he uh, turned into Suplex City for a minute. He was killing both members of Legado del Fantasma. He was uh, suplexing them. Then he clotheslined the hell out of one of them. Craziness. And listen, at the end, uh, I think it was two, di two dimes. You know, two dimes from the family over there in the family. You know, two dimes. He uh, accidentally on purpose. <laughs> He accidentally on purpose hit one of the Legato guys in the leg with the damn uh, club. He hit him. He messed up his running the ropes. And after that, uh, Diamond Mine took over and won the bout. So Kemp is really good. I like him. They need to build upon him. He's got, he's got like explosive athlete type uh, power. So... As long as they continue to mold him and teach him the ropes, he's going to be on point. Roger Strong is fantastic. And this continued the storyline. And these two, the uh, Gano del Fantasma and Tony D's family, they're going to continue to feud, which is great. So, also, Wesley talked about his plan and need to prove himself. Trick Williams interrupted him, mocked him for leaving his tag team partner, and then... He challenged him to a match, and Trick Williams refused. He said, I'll hit you on my own time. I'll call you back. So, I don't know if Nash Carter's coming back, but they keep referring to Wesley and Nash, but without saying Nash Carter's name. So, it seems like he's coming back, but I'm not sure. I hope he does come back because, you know, we all, listen, if I would have had social media back in the day, I would have had some stupid pictures too, and that was a stupid picture that probably shouldn't have got out that somebody leaked and they got rid of him for it. So hopefully Nash Carter comes back after this little hiatus and he gets right. Uh, Tiffany Stratton had a promo, uh, a pre-taped interview uh, about Wendy Chu and she's going to ruin her. Tiffany Stratton looked all right last week. So I'm, I'm all for that. I like Wendy Chu. So we had... Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade challenge Toxic Attraction for the tag team titles. Uh, the only problem here is uh, Perez and Jade got interrupted by Ch Katana Chance and Kaden Carter, and then they started brawling. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So they all came out, you know, all WWE style. I think Roxanne Perez is phenomenal. I think Cora Jade is going to be really good one day. And Toxic Attraction, they're going to they're gonna have to lose soon. Uh, Gigi Dolan got a chant because people like the way she looks. That's great. 
Uh, and this was a decent segment, and that was it. I mean, what are we going to do? You know? Um, that was it. That was it for this. So, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in regards to that. Giovanni Vici promised uh, he's probably going to end up fighting Ikman Jiro because they want to talk about style. Great. And NXT had an Apollo Crews promo in which he asked himself, how could he be better? Great. Uh, nothing wrong here. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with Toxic Attraction. It, it just seems like they got to lose sometime. You can't just have them beating everybody all the time. They have to have their comeuppance in a way that makes sense. We had Idris and Foe versus Cameron Grimes to the moon. And not going to lie, Idris and Foe, one of his best damn matches. Why? Because Cameron Grimes is amazing. Cameron Grimes is really, really good. And this serious Cameron Grimes, I like even better. He lost. Uh, he won the match with the cave-in. Enfo lost. But Enfo did look good. They did shake hands afterwards. It was great. This and then after the match, they had a, he had an interaction with Braun Breaker. And he said, listen, Braun, I don't think you want this Cameron Grimes. Because if this Cameron Grimes shows up, He's going to be the new NXT champion. Yeah, we ain't playing no games. We're going to the moon, but we are serious. And Cameron Grimes ain't playing no more. He's going out there, and he's trying to kick ass. And that's what I like. You activated my trap card. Ever, ever since he got serious, he's been doing even better. So, <clears throat> Cameron Grimes, don't know if he's beating Brom. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Do I have any more water? Shit. It's like my throat is dry as hell. Pause. Cameron Grimes, I don't know if he has any more. Uh, I don't know if he if if he's gonna win the championship. That's what I meant to say. But I wish he did, because he's great. We had a Vaughn Wagner versus a Brooks Jensen in something that I did not care about. Von Wagner used the ropes to injure the right arm of Jensen. Jensen hit a running clothesline and an explosive DDT for a near fall. But the Von Wagner um, has beat the Jensen. <laughs> so he, you know, he did what he had to do. Uh, I, I don't really care about this feud, but it happened. We had an Abba Fire versus a Lash Legend. And Abba Fire, who I really like, Kaylee Ray, she's great. Lash Legends, who I really don't like, she's okay, getting better. And Abba Fire wins the match because Lash Legend took the bat and knocked her head off. Uh, that sucked. Listen, now I guess they don't want Lash to lose. They don't want Fire to lose. This will continue. Fine with me. We had a pre-tape segment with Nikita Lyons. Said she was not. Said she was done waiting and she's coming back next week. That's great. Give me a hell yeah. And it's not just because of the way she looks. I think she's got something. It sucks that she got hurt. If she gets better in the ring, holy shit, they're gonna have themselves a problem. Joey Gacy told a dyad that the success they would find next would be sweeter than any goal they won before. I have no idea what he's talking about. So, respectfully, Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. we had North American Championship on the line. The A champion, Carmelo Hayes versus Tony D and the family. Well, mainly just Tony D. This is great. You know why? Because Carmelo Hayes is great. Tony D'Angelo is great. You activated my trap card. These guys get it down. DeMarco. Backstage earlier in the night, D'Angelo reminded Escobar to help him later or else they're going to have a problem here. So, Tony D'Angelo uh, was the bigger man, the stronger man. He relied on him. Carmelo Hayes is the quicker man, and he used that to his advantage. Um, sent him into the turnbuckle, followed by a lunge blower for a near fall. This was good. Uh... 
Melo and D'Angelo, they got great chemistry. They they do work well together. At the end of the match, Santos Escobar was sitting there with the brass knucks. Tony D, one of the brass knucks. So he's sitting there, he's like, and just looked at him, passed the brass knucks to uh, Mr. Carmelo Hayes, who proceeded to right hook Tony D. And he took the L in this match. This further continues the D'Angelo Escobar storyline. There needs to be at least one more match. I am almost certain that if those two have a match, Escobar is going to win. Because you know they like to do this 50-50 booking shit. But, and they'll get themselves out of the family. Or he could lie next week or the week after and say, listen, it was an accident. I meant to give it to you. It just slipped. But the way it came up across here, the family was arguing with Legado del Fantasma, screaming at them from the ring. So I don't think they're... <laughs> I think this is officially a broken up team. It only lasted a week or two, but uh, I would have I would have I would have drug it out a little bit longer. But hey, I'm not arguing. So NXT was surprise, motherfucker, pretty decent. So I'm not gonna sit here and cap on them. Stop the cap. But it was pretty decent for what it was. Now we had Monday Night Raw. Let's talk about that. What did we have on the show? Not gonna go in order. So let's just say how it is. Bianca Belair has a new challenger at the Money in the Bank ladder match. So she came out, went to talk her ish, and we had a uh, Becky Lynch sighting, an Oscar sighting, a Liv Morgan sighting, an Alexa Bliss sighting, and a Carmella sighting. And guess what? They had a fatal five way, Carmella won. Nothing wrong here because Bianca Belair is going to beat Carmella. They need somebody to beat because things change. So Carmella is the perfect person. They do have women on this roster. They just don't use them often. So, nope. good for Carmella. Hopefully, they have themselves a decent match. I just want to see a good match. Carmella take the L. Alexa Bliss, her time is coming. Liv Morgan, I really, really like. Liv Morgan, I say this every week. I would give her a run with the title. Just not now. Now is not her time. Asuka is who she is. Becky is who she is. But... I really, really like Liv Morgan. I hope she comes back and kills it. We did have Vince McMahon make an appearance. He talked up Monday Night Raw, hyping up that John Cena would be on next week's show. And just like he did on SmackDown, he made it a point to um, uh, look into the, uh, you know, uh, kind of lean into the stuff that he's going through. He ain't really addressing much, but listen. Vince is giving a big F you to everybody who thinks he's stepping down. He ain't stepping down of nothing. And if you thought he was, get the fuck out of here. You stupid. You stupid. We'll see what the investigations uh, conclude. But as I will talk to you guys tomorrow about John Laurinaitis, looks like we have the scapegoat. And we looks like we have who's coming up to the chopping block. I am not surprised. So, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Omos uh, fought Matt Riddle. Riddle was nursing the rib injuries from last week. So, Omos beat him in a qualifying match. Seth Rollins then came out after, cut a, uh, cut a promo on him, called him a loser. <laughs> I can't do that laugh, but he called him a loser. Cool. Curve stop. See you later. Bobby Lashley interrupted Austin Theory's pose down. Uh, as Theory posed in the center of the ring, this included a few, he took a few shots at John Cena. That's probably going to be the event uh, for SummerSlam, John Cena versus Austin Theory. But John, C John Cena is like Austin Theory. Austin Theory is the new John Cena. They got the same body type. They got the same physique. They came into the ring with the same physique. Is he going to be John Cena? Is he as good on the mic as John Cena? Is he as good in the ring as John Cena is? Make no mistake, John Cena is good in the ring. Especially when he has the right dance partner. I don't know. Is he as strong as John Cena? I don't know. I hope they have a good match. But time will tell. Uh, yeah, so that happened. And then Bobby Lashley hit him with a spear. And then sayonara, see you later. We also had Angelo Dawkins beat Jay Uso. We the ones. With the Sidal Powerbomb. And they're probably going to be challenging for the tag team title soon. We had Elias on the show. And I know you're probably like, what? Get the fuck out of here! 
But Elias was on the show, and he had a conversation with Ezekiel on the show. Which is weird, because they're really the same person. But, which is weird. But, I would, thought I was seeing things, but I really wasn't. Stop it. Get some help. This is interesting. So, Kevin Owens interrupted Elias' concert. Elias and Ezekiel were shown having a conversation on the TV screen, which was, like I said, very weird. And after Owens stumbled to the backstage area, after getting hit by a goddamn guitar, he was, cha uh, he was challenging Elias or Ezekiel to a match next week on Raw, uh, at which point Ezekiel showed up and accepted the challenge. This is very interesting. Listen, it's better than doing nothing, KO. KO deserves better, but it's better than doing nothing. Perfect. At least it has my interest. Bobby Lashley beat Chad Gable, Otis, and Theory in a gauntlet match. Early, um, this was consequence for early in the show. Theory said that he would give Lashley a shot at the U.S. title at Money in the Bank if he could beat all three opponents in a row. Lashley did that, pinning Theory with a counter cradle for the victory. AJ Styles was on Miss TV after they went and talked it to each other. We went to commercial break, and this brought out Champion. Who this brought out Champa, who had a five-minute match, six-minute match with AJ Styles. <sighs> gotcha, bitch. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Respect my authority. The things they do to top NXT talent in this company, I fucking hate. Champa deserves better. Oscar and Becky Lynch fought for a Money in the Bank qualifying match. Asuka got the win with a kick to the dome, a la the same way she beat Bailey years and years and years ago on NXT, which was great. So for Becky Lynch, stupid, you shall not be getting a Money in the Bank qualifying match. You are out. For Asuka, good for her. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Good match towards the end. And ladies and gentlemen, that was your Monday Night Raw. With Becky Lynch going off the air, kicking, screaming, and crying. Cool with me. She's a bad guy. She deserves to get shitted on right now. So, that was your Monday Night Raw. So, like I was saying, everything, everything is everything. It's all good. I liked, I thought, I thought NXT was decent. I thought Raw was okay. So, I'll take it. Listen, we can't always be 100%. Everything can't always be great. I will take this as long as they continue to do what they've been doing and get better. Will they continue to get better? I don't know. But they need to keep taping NXT because it's been better the last couple of weeks. Let's see if they follow through. With that being said, it is me, RJD, and I am out. Check out the socials one more time. With that being said, follow me on all my social media. Y'all already know what the wrestling I am out. Y'all good people be safe. Stay dry. And NYC. Peace. Perfect. Down the Marco.